हेलो एंड वेलकम टू डेली यूपीएससी पर्सपेक्टिव टुडे वी हैव टेकन अप इंपॉर्टेंट आर्टिकल्स फ्रॉम द हिंदू एंड द इंडियन एक्सप्रेस न्यूज़पेपर सो टुडे वी हैव टेकन अप फोर प्रीट रिलेटेड टॉपिक्स सो द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन वी हैव टेकन फॉर योर प्रीट इज बेस्ड ऑन परचेजिंग मैनेजर्स इंडेक्स द इंडेक्स गिव अ गुड इनसाइट अबाउट then second question we have taken then third question we have taken el nino because there was a el nino the climate then next question we have taken on cbi now a delegation entailed CI, CBI officers and NI officers to attend Interpol conference. For two topics. The first one talks about uniform civil code because so because recently. high court delhi high court squash petition which talks about uniform civil code and second topic based on indian and israel ties ties because recently prime minister modi attended cop 28 summit where he met israel president so let's start our session with our three pointers so the first question is based on this article which appeared on page number 11 in the hindu newspaper context of this article is that manufacturing purchasing managers index that is pmi which is released by snp global india okay so according to this report there is a rebound in manufacturing sector activity which you can see in this graph okay now as upsc has been asking question based on various indexes like in year 2020 upsc upsc has asked question based on consumer price index and wholesale price index so here we have taken a practice question on purchasing managers index now here we have given you three statements and you need to find out the correct one So the first statement is it is a survey based indicator of business conditions consisting only of objective question. So for first you need to understand what is purchasing managers index. So this survey basically respond to the change in various business variables and this variables compared to the previous month whether that particular variable has risen improved fallen deteriorated or remain unchanged so basically it talks about the current and future business conditions it give a very good insight about business indicators to analyst to the investors who are planning to invest in the company or in the business so its range is starts from zero and end at 100 so if value is 50 of this index that means there is no change and if it is more than 50 that means there is expansion in economy and if it is less than 50 that means there is contraction in economy now if pmi value of previous month is more than of current month then what it reflects if value of pmi is of previous month is greater than of current month it reflects contraction in economy it reflects contraction and if value is of previous month is lesser than current month it reflects expansion in economy okay so now let's come to the mcq 
it is a survey based indicator of business condition consisting only of objective question no it do answer objective it do provide answers to objective question like with respect to selling price exports purchasing activity but it also provide answers to sent, uh, objective uh, questions based on sentiments like where you see your business in coming year or in coming month okay so it do forecast their output to be higher the same or lower in a year's time so it not only deals with objective question it also deals with subjective question so with this our first statement is incorrect now let's come to the second statement the service pmi has a wider questionnaire than the manufacturing pmi now manufacturing this index consists a lot of question related to inventories now inventories is more related to manufacturing sector than service sector so here there's a lot of question with respect to manufacturing then service so service so with this a second statement is incorrect because here service pmi has a wider questionnaire than manufacturing pmi has a wider question than service pmi then come to the third statement the composite pmi is an equal average of manufacturing and service sector pmi see there are three kind of indexes first related to manufacturing second related to services and third related to composite index which consists of manufacturing and service sector and both are having equal weightage so with this our third statement is correct so here our answer is only a that is only one now let's come to the second three pointer as you have seen there are many articles about cop28 and here india pitched for 30 30 uh, 33rd 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 edition of annual summit in 2028 okay now upsc has been asking question about various projects related to environment or initiatives related to environment like in year 2014 upsc has asked question based on global environment facility which serves as a financial mechanism for convention on biological diversity and united nations framework convention on climate change so here we have framed a question uh, which entailed important key takeaways from the current summit okay so the first statement is a proposal to host the conference of the parties must be approved by half of the signatories to the united nations framework convention on climate change that is unfccc okay now this statement is incorrect why because a proposal to host the conference of the parties must be approved by all the signatories see india pitched for 33rd edition which going to be uh, uh, come up in year 2028 so for that india need approval of all the signatories and not just half so this makes our first statement incorrect then come to the second statement india has never hosted a conference of the parties this statement is wrong because india hosted first conference of the parties in year 2002 in new delhi so this makes our second statement incorrect now let's come to the third statement the green credit initiative has been launched by world bank group to provide credit for green projects now this statement is partially correct and partially incorrect see this initiative is led by india and it do provide credit for green projects so here all three statements are incorrect so our answer is d that is none let let briefly see about green credit initiative it has been conceptualized as a mechanism to in, incentivize voluntary pro planet actions as an effective response to the challenge of climate change 
it envisages the issue of green credit for plantation on waste, degraded lands, river catchment areas, and to rejuvenate and revive natural ecosystem. So this is about green credit initiative. Now let's come to our next free pointer. This article talks about El Nino, which you know is a famous geophysical phenomenon. And context is that IMD has forecasted warm winters in India which is in sync with the global winters and the reason behind this is impact of El Nino, okay. So UPSC has already asked question based on different geophysical phenomena like Indian Ocean Dipole in year 2017. So here we have taken practice question on El Nino. Here you are provided with two statements and you need to find out the correct one. So the first statement is during this event, Trade winds are even stronger than usual, pushing more warm water towards Asia. Now, to understand this, first you should know what is El Nino. Let's understand this with the help of this map. See, this bold arrows depicts normal year, and this dotted arrows depicts abnormal year. That is. El Nino. So what happens during normal year, Eastern Pacific, that is near Peru coast, witness high pressure. Okay. So wherever there is a high pressure, there will be aridity. That is, there will be no rainfall. So this area witness aridity. But in contrast, near Darwin area, that is Western Pacific side, there is low pressure. Okay, you see this absurgence. This depicts low pressure area. And when there is low pressure area, there is chances of good rainfall. So because of this, India will witness good amount of rainfall during normal years. Now, what happened in El Nino? See this dotted one. This depicts this depicts low pressure area, low pressure area reason behind good amount of rainfall. So this section of area will witness good rainfall. But in contrast, Western Pacific, this area composed of high pressure. And high pressure is the reason behind aridity. And there will be a drought like condition in India, Indonesia. Okay. So now let's come back to the MCQ. During this event, that is El Nino, trade winds are even stronger than usual, pushing more warm waters towards Asia. This you can make, you can answer this statement with the help of this map. And you can see that it pushes current towards Peru, Southern America, and not Asia. So with this, our first statement is incorrect. It pushes warm water towards South America, okay, not towards Asia. Now let's come to the second statement. During this event, that is El Nino, severe droughts occur in Australia, Indonesia, India and Southern Africa that we have seen just now, that if there, sorry, if there will be a high pressure in this section that is western pacific definitely there will be a uh, aridity and this will cause drought in india indonesia australia okay so with this our second statement is correct so here our answer is only b that is only two Now let's come to the last free pointer which is based on this news article which appeared on page number 8. Context is that CBI and NI officials led Indian delegate at the 91st Interpol General Assembly urged member countries to deny safe heavens to crime, criminals and the proceeds of crime. So this is our demand. Now. UPSC has been asking question based on different statutory and non-statutory bodies. 
ओके एज इन ईयर टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन दे हैव फ्रीम क्वेश्चन ऑन नीति आयोग विच रिप्लेस प्लानिंग कमीशन दैट इज ऑप्शन डी नाउ लेट्स कम टू द प्रैक्टिस क्वेश्चन विद रेफरेंस टू सेंट्रल ब्यूरो ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन कंसिडर फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट एंड हियर वी आर गिवन यू थ्री स्टेटमेंट एंड यू नीड टू फाइंड आउट द राइट वन और द करेक्ट वन सो द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज दैट इट वॉज स्टैब्लिश्ड ऑन द रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ सुवर्ण सिंह कमेटी now this statement is incorrect because it was established not on swan singh committee but on santanam committee on prevention of corruption okay remember this committee name now come to the second statement it is a statutory body working under the overall control, control of prime minister's office that is pmo now you should remember that base for statutory body is some acts but cbi was set up in 1963 by a resolution and that to by ministry of home affairs and it is not a statutory body it derives its power from delhi special police establishment act that is dp dsp 1946 so it derives its power from delhi special full establishment act it is not created by this act it derives its power from this act that is delhi special police establishment act 1946 okay so this makes our second statement incorrect now let's come to the third statement delhi special police establishment act 1946 fixes a tenure of not less than 2 years for a cbi director now this statement is correct because this act fixes a tenure of not less than 2 years for cbi director okay so with this you can see that our answer is option a that is only one okay so this is all about prem pointers now let's come to the main topic so our first means topic is based on uniform uniform civil code and what is the context of this news that recently high court refuses to entertain please seeking uniform civil code and the reason what high court stated that this matter law commission is already studying this matter okay now as this article revolves around uniform civil code which is important from gs paper 2 under polity and governance and also from the perspective of social justice okay now let me put you let me put one small question in front of you that we all went to school and we were having childhood friends from different backgrounds different religion having different faith have we ever wonder that they will be marrying under different personal laws like hindu marriage act christian marriage act sharia law have we ever wonder see this is the one aspect uh, of personal law that is uh, uh, connected to marriage just think about if everyone govern under different laws the kind of chaos or tension or complexity it will create with res uh, with respect to executive judiciary legislative so to reduce this complexity what is the cure what is the solution solution lies in having a uniform uh, personal law which entails common uh, laws or common procedures with respect to marriage divorce uh, succession adoption inheritance so if we have common law definitely it will reduce chaos or tension so the solution is uniform civil code what is uniform civil code uniform civil code is a common law which 
कंबाइन देश ऑफ ऑल द पर्सनल लॉ एंड विच विल क्रिएट इक्वालिटी फॉर ऑल द सिटीजन इर रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ देर रिलीजन इर रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ देर सेक्स इर रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ देर सेक्शुअल ओरिएंटेशन इर रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ देर जेंडर सो इट विल ब्रिंग इक्वालिटी यूनिफॉर्मिटी एंड वाई वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट यूनिफॉर्म सिविल कोड बिकॉज इट इज मैंशन इन आर्टिकल फोर्टी फोर your dpsp which forms part 4 of the indian constitution there it is mentioned that state shall endeavor to achieve a common good among its citizen state shall endeavor and state should but it can't be enforced why because it is a part of it lies in part 4 which is non justiciable unlike fundamental rights which can be enforced okay so now you know what is uniform civil code in crux uniform civil code will replace all personal laws based on different customary practices uh, different religion uh, uh, basis and it will all formulate one common law which will deal uh, aspects other than public affair like marriage divorce inheritance etc okay so this law will cover these aspects now we know what is uniform civil code and where it is mentioned in our constitution now let's delve much deeper let's come to the historical background of uniform civil code as it is not a new concept not a new debate so it started with the colonial history basically british unified the criminal laws to ease their administration process okay so what they have done they unified the criminal laws but they left civil courts to the individual uh, religious minorities or to the individuals that they can plan their own criteria but they curated uniform criminal code to ease their administration process okay so we have uniform criminal code okay and why they done so to avoid social unrest if they interfere with personal laws definitely there will be a chances high chances of social unrest so to avoid social unrest they given this discretion to the religious groups different religious groups so different religious groups have their own laws and these law govern their own individuals okay now later this debate came into the main course when there was a, a debate during uh, the time of framing constitution so there we can see that groups divided one was supporting ucc this group was supported by b r ambedkar according to this group we should uh, we should go for a uh, uniform civil code why because it will promote gender parity it will promote national integration secularism but there was another group who was against it why according to them that we should not temper with personal laws or we should not hurt the sentiment with or without their discretion so there were two opinions so this is all about historical background of uniform civil code okay now this law can do wonders as it can give a national it can promote national integration it can promote secularism it can promote gender parity but still this law has not seen day of the light so there must be some hurdles so now in further discussion we'll see arguments in favor of uniform civil code and arguments against uniform civil code okay so the first argument in favor of uniform civil code is that it will promote equal status to all citizens 
See, anything which will bring uniformity, definitely it will give equal status to all citizens because it will remove the layer of discrimination which is based on religion, caste, sex. Okay? So, it will bring uniformity. You understand this that with an example that in, uh, in Muslims, males can do four marriage and they unilaterally can take divorce which you know with the term uh, triple talaq though this recently outlawed by the supreme court then all uh, hindu personal law are little bit more biased on inheritance towards male years so recently there were many judgments which provide equal ground for male and female so you can see that all these personal laws have a biases towards one against one gender so this uniformity can eradicate this problem it can bring gender parity and question is not only about gender inequality question is about all the complexities because see multiple religion multiple laws definitely there will be a complexity inconsistency so uniform civil code will solve this problem okay and also it adhere to the principle of to the article 14 that is equality equal protection of laws okay now the second is accommodations aspirations of young population that based on principle of mod modernity and reform existing personal laws. See, recently Supreme Court came with many judgments which accommodate the principle of modernity. In Shah case in 1985, Supreme Court upheld that mu uh, Muslim women will get the maintenance even after Idat period. Okay? In Sarla Mutkal case, 1995 supreme court upheld that hindu male cannot convert to muslim without dissolving first marriage or they cannot marry under different laws without dissolving their first marriage and this principle was upheld it by in sarla mudgal case again in daniel latif case 2001 supreme court upheld it that muslim women will get the maintenance right even if she get divorced under Muslim personal law. See, all these cases reflect what? These cases accommodate the principle of modernity and this principle based on what? Universally accepted values like equality, liberty, So all these values promote social harmony and you should also know that contemporary India consists of 50% of the young population. That means a 50% population is having age less than 25 years. Now if this 50% population social attitude basically based on modern principles like humanity, equality, liberty. So, to harness the potential of demographic dividend, what we should have? We should have uniform civil code. This is one of the strong argument in favor of uniform civil code. Okay? And you can quote all these cases in your answer to enrich your answer. Next, it will promote national integration. Definitely, it will promote national integration because it will reduce the scope of uh, politicization of issues based on discrimination, appeasement on uh, religious lines. Still in India, we are voting on religious and cultural lines. And how long will do that? To become, to become developed nation, now we should not vote on religious and cultural lines. We should vote on development agenda environment conservation, economic upliftment, 
that's on that's on the basis we should vote now there we should have like voting appeals based on these issues not on the religious and cultural lines and uniform civil code will cut down this okay so definitely it will promote national integration now in turn it will promote secularism and neutrality it's true in india you must have heard that goa is the only state with uniform civil code all the citizens in goa they have the same law with respect to marriage inheritance divorce and this uh, ucc stems out of portuguese 1967 act and even on global front if you see that many western countries adopted the same you take an example of france france adopted napoleonic code which provide the base of private laws so to change the course from developing to developed this is one of the key change we need to make okay so definitely it will promote national integration it will promote secularism and neutrality but here one thing you need to understand that the diversity india is having and the diversity western nations are having india is having much more than western nations okay and this is one of the reason which is a cause of concern or you can say implementation hurdle okay so these are the arguments in favor now let's see what are the other implementation hurdles so the first hurdle is india's biggest strength that is india is a diverse country now india is a diverse country but why this is a hurdle this is a hurdle because see in india uh, you have multiple laws like uh, indian personal law, uh, hindu personal law bias towards females on inheritance aspect muslim female age marriageable age is different if we compare from other religion you must have heard about polygamy and polyandry many religious and uh, customs do allow polygamy and polyandry in india now what is polygamy polygamy is when one male can have multiple wives and what is polyandry one female can have multiple husbands okay so many religious and customary practices do permit polyandry and polygamy then if you talk about grounds of divorce they vary religion to religion if any female is asking for the compensation after divorce that depends on her religious affiliation okay so all these aspects bring inconsistency okay and that is why this is one of the implementation hurdle india diversity which is its strength became the hurdle in implementing uniform civil law or code okay second is lack of consensus on provisions of ucc see all these uh, personal laws they are deeply rooted on ages old custom customary practices or you can say religious belief so to have any kind of twist and turn you need to have a delicate balance and respect for that years old traditions and beliefs which is one of the issue to find out that right balance and why this lack of consensus is an issue you un understand this with the help of example divorce is common in all the religion but there is a one basis for do so that is desertion so to this waiting time for desertion to be considered as a like parameter to sanction divorce varies religion to religion for christians it is 2 years 
and for Hindus it is that waiting period is seven years. Now, this waiting time is a bone of contention that what should be the idle time. If they put two ago, again it is a matter of concern like uh, they are favoring one community or one religion. If they put seven, then again there is a bone of contention that they are favoring one. So what should be the ideal one? So there is a lack of conscience on this aspect and this is one of the aspects. There are multiple aspects. There are multiple laws governing our personal affairs. Okay. So there is a lack of conscience on provision of UCC, which is another important implementation hurdle. Then it violates fundamental rights, that is fundamental right 25 and FR 29. Let's understand this. The article 1415 give uh, equality and same article bars state to interfere or you can say bar state not to discriminate on the basis of religion okay but article 25 and article 29 article 25 give right to profess your religion article 29 give right to uh, have distinct culture now here one side you are getting that uh, equality before law and religion cannot discriminate on the basis of religion so, state need to ensure that common pedestal for everyone to avoid that discrimination. And here, Article 25 and 29 give you that uh, freedom to profess your religion. But same Article 25 having one another aspect and which is that state can interfere on the ground to maintain public order. Okay. So, as you can see here that this article 25 is not absolute article. State can interfere. Now if a state do so, then uh, people might teach to quote that state is violating our fundamental right. That's how it creates another layer of issue. Okay. Now, let's come to the next hurdle that is inconsistency of applying one nation, one law. Why there is inconsistency of applying one nation, one law? Because if you see uh, criminal codes, you take example of CRPC, IPC. Even that, even in CRPC and IPC, they are not unified totally. You take provision of anticipatory bails. The provisions of anticipatory bails vary state to state. Okay. So, why we need uniform civil code? Okay. The next is, it is against spirit of federalism. How? Because personal law comes under the concurrent list. Now, many constitutional experts, they said that even framers of the constitution didn't intend in total uniformity. And that is why they put it in concurrent list where union and center have the same right both can frame the law and they also don't want total uniformity then what is the need to have uniform civil code so this will go against the spirit of federalism okay then last but not the least protection of human rights or social obligation uh, there are many experts they argue that every nation they respected or they formulated or they laid down the principles to solve social evils like child marriage india is already having a law against it okay so when there is a law against social uh, societal evils and it ensures social obligation, then what is the need to temper with personal laws? Why to twist and turn personal laws? There is no need to do so. Under the garb of preventing or protection of human rights, right? So these are the different implementation hurdles in to have uniform civil code. 
Now, in this article, we have covered what is Uniform Civil Code, its historical background precisely. Then we have seen arguments in favor of it. And right now, we have seen the arguments or hurdles in implementing Uniform Civil Code. So, what is the way out? Now, debate around Uniform Civil Code we have seen is complex and multifaceted. It revolves around many angles, religious, cultural, political. Okay, that is why it is complex. Though UCC having the potential to eradicate gender inequality, promote national integration, secularism, but it do raise a concern with respect to cultural diversity. We have given special status to Northeast state. So if we start placing everyone on the same pedestal, so it is that we are curbing their uh, cultural right, minority right. Okay. So it raises concern about religious freedom, cultural diversity and right of minority communities. So where is the balance? Balance is challenges to maintain this right balance between these competing interests and ensuring if UCC is implemented, then it will, should be equitable, inclusive and respectful of India's diverse cultural and religious landscape. And this idea is also supported by 21st Law Commission. They emphasize on reforming family laws rather solely dependent on UCC or enactment of UCC. Okay. So, this is all about Uniform Civil Code. If you have any doubt with respect to Uniform Civil Code, you can post or you can drop your uh, doubts in our comment box. Okay. Then, now let's come to the second main topic, which is based on this news article, which appeared on page 8 in the Hindu newspaper. This article context is that on the sidelines of COP28, Prime Minister Modi met Israel President Isaac. Okay. And there Prime Minister Modi ensured continue humanitarian aid to the Palestinian population. But here he didn't talk about ceasefire which is a new development. Okay, so bilateral groupings or ties is important in your uh, GS paper too. And this uh, article revolves around India and Israel. So in this discussion, we'll discuss evolution of India and Israel relation. We'll also cover dimensions of bilateral relation. Now, this theme is also important from the UPSC perspective. As in year 2022, UPSC framed question on grouping which entails India and Israel that is I2U2. In year 2018, UPSC frame question on the evolution of ties between India and Israel. So answer of this question we will discuss today. First part that is evolution of India and Israel relation. Now, India and Israel consist of relation or evolution you can say three layers. First, when there is a distance between India and Israel. Second, where India came closer to Israel. And third, we'll see in our discussion. So, it all started when India and Israel dealt with difficult partition and emerged out relatively stable democracy in our volatile neighborhoods. See, India, it all started when India got independence and India got bloodshed, independence after bloodshed partition. So India decided never to support any kind of partition which is based on the bloodshed or on the religious line. 
and that is why India against two nation theory is led to the creation of his right and that is why our prime that is why prime minister nehru voted against this two nation theory and you will be amazed to know that india was the only non arab nation who voted against two nation theory or creation of his right okay and why it so it was based on various factors the first one is obviously india was against the uh, creation of any state which is based on religious lines and that is why india always supported a uh, palestinian territory with autonomous territory for jewish population okay second india stand against colonialism and for india zionist movement is a neo colonialism so india was against this then india was a newly independent country and it was highly dependent on arab states for its energy security and that is why india supported palestinian cause then us led western bloc now israel is part of us led western bloc and us why india was against this bloc and india was tilted towards ussr bloc soviet union bloc why because this us led western bloc supported pakistan over kashmir issue so obviously our tilt was towards ussr then india decided not to antagonize large muslim population over this issue so these are the major reasons why there was a arms then distance between india and israel this formulate the first year of india israel relationship here we are discussing about the evolution so this is the first year now let's come to the second see 1950 led to the creation of israel state and 1992 india established full uh, diplomatic ties with israel and it all started in 1991 why and from here it's your second phase second phase of evolution of ties between india and israel so the first reason is obvious reason that there was a disintegration of ussr in 1991 earlier there was two, two superpowers ussr and us now after this it led to the unipolar world guided by us and india witnessed economic reforms in 1991 okay india opened up its economy there is only one leader now us so there is a obvious tilt towards us these are the major reason behind shift in india's foreign policy other domestic factors are also there now india was highly dependent on israel defense imports okay now israel was pretty good in handling cross border terrorism so india thought that it will be a solution for its kashmir issue so this drew india closer to israel Israel expertise in solving cross border terrorism do India towards Israel okay and this we can see that there was a large exchange of uh, equipments like night vision goggles ammunition and there was a tremendous increase after pokhran that is year 1998 okay then there was a good exchange of information between raw and mossad that is israel intelligence agency so these are the reasons which shaped the second year of evolution of india and israel ties now let's come to the last one which revolves around de hyphenation policy Now, what is de-hyphenation policy? 
सपोज See earlier, India need to pick one country, and India need to support that, or you can say one section. That is, in early, in first tier, India was supporting Palestinian, that is PLO, and in second, there was a movement of India and Israel towards each other. But in third phase, India decided to go on a case-to-case -case basis. That means, on some issue, India can support PLO. that is palestinian liberation organization and on some issue india can support israel and india can do so by maintaining a good relationship with both israel and plo okay so india can go case to case basis here and this policy is known as the hyphenation policy so in year 2016 india abstained again from UNHRC resolution against Israel. Okay, here India abstained. Just watch that how this dehyphenation worked. In year two thousand eighteen, Prime Minister Modi became first ever Indian Prime Minister to visit Israel. Okay, first ever Prime Minister, but there he decided not to visit Ramallah, and what is that? De facto capital of Palestinian. okay then a uh, trump administration decided to recognize jerusalem as the israel capital but here india had voted in favor of resolution in the united nation general assembly opposing it see earlier india abstained from voting then pm modi visit israel there he skipped ramallah and in later india voted against israel so you can see that india made analysis case to case basis this is the hyphenation and it all started from year 2014 or post 2014 so here you can see there are three tiers first where india was at a distance then second india and israel came closer there was a convergence of interest and third the hyphenation last year where india is balancing its interest and deciding on the case to case basis not stick to one or not having one alignment that they will support only israel or they will support only plo okay this is mature diplomacy now we have seen the evolution of ties between india and israel now let's see those sectors where they are converging and it is a static fact so i request you to take the screenshot which you can use in your answer to enrich the quality of your answers so there are several dimensions of bilateral relations economic investment agriculture defense science and technology so india so bilateral mercantile trade which was us dollar 200 million in 1992 stood us dollar 5.65 billion in year 2018 and 19 see the growth and also you can see that it is in india's favor that means india is exporting more also india is israel's third largest trade partner in asia and seventh largest globally then indian investment in israel total us dollar 1.2.4 million and there were about more than 300 investment and majorly israel invested in india in high tech domain and in agriculture okay then third sector is agriculture india benefited from israel expertise and technology in horticulture mechanization nursery management canopy management you must have heard about drip irrigation that comes under micro irrigation 
Israel inspired India in this. Then another very important sector is defense sector. There we can see there are regular exchanges between the armed forces. There is a cooperation on security issues, including joint working group on counter terrorism. And India is among India's top three arms suppliers for the last five years. We have seen that in Israel supported India, especially post uh, Pokhran, that is 1998. Then India and Israel have jointly developed Barrack 8, that is air defense system. Then last but not the least, convergence in science and technology. India and Israel signed one MOU in year 2017 that established I4 Fund, that is India-Israel Industrial Research and Development Innovation Fund. This fund developed by Department of Science and Technology, India and National Authority for Technological Innovation, Israel. So these are the different domains or sectors where Israel is engaging with India. Okay, so in this discussion, we have seen the evolution of ties and the domains, the areas where they are having a mutual interest. So whatever doubts you are having, you can post in our YouTube uh, comment box. We'll try to answer as soon as possible. That's all for today. Stay tuned for more such updates.